Hi everybody, and thanks for joining me today. So, working on the last pillar here. We are getting so close to being finished. Getting close to a 99% done, in fact. So, we may be done this week, who knows? <laughs> we shall see. Yeah, it all depends, as yesterday, didn't get much stitching done because uh, putting up our Christmas decorations for, yeah, and then uh, I had to make sure I did a bunch of shopping before we got a whole bunch of snow. So to make sure I got our groceries for the week. So yeah, it was busy, but yeah, today is definitely a hibernate and stitch kind of day. It is still blowing snow outside. Yeah, my poor husband is going to have to um, clear the driveway at lunchtime because uh, son and I have a dentist appointment and we wouldn't be able to get out of the driveway otherwise. <laughs> oh, yeah, it snowed that much, so. Yeah, it's funny. We have a um we have an artificial Christmas tree. And uh, every year my husband will set up the uh the center trunk and the very top part and then say the tree is done. Every year, you know. <laughs> and uh I took a picture and said, you know, uh, about it. And uh, one of my friends says, yeah, well, you know, he has to put up with your puns all year. I said, yeah, that's fair. Because, you know? <laughs> yes, I tell terrible jokes. In fact, all my friends know to tag me in the uh, terrible puns because I love them. <laughs> So yeah, as you can see, this uh, stitching ended up being pretty much vertical again because that's the way the colors are going. So it's just the most efficient way. I could continue to force it to go in a diagonal direction, but I find that would require more um, color changes and it would just slow me down. So as this way still doesn't um, close stitches in, I am happy to do it this way. As like I said, it goes a little faster. I am so eager to be done. New starts are fun and finally finishing a project is definitely a lot of fun. Especially with these great big projects, uh, it can take years to get to a finish, so. This has been over a year and a half. I started this um, May of 2021, last year, so. And I've been working almost exclusively on it ever since. I did take a break to make a little um, wedding announcement for my sister-in-law, which I did feature on this uh, channel. And I started a couple other projects because they have a lot of background, so I'm getting that out of the way first. But yeah, most of my stitching, like I'd say 90% of my, my stitching has been on this project, so. If everything I have left to uh, stitch is in my frame now, I won't have to move it again. I have moved it for the last time. And I'm using an uh, 11 by 11 frame now. Since that's all the space I need, it makes it a little more manageable. Yeah, I tried a big 17 by 17 frame, but I found it was too big for me. I kept smacking my hand into it and stuff, so, yeah. 
So what I did was I, I took it apart because I had an 11 by 17 frame. So now I have two 11 by set or 11 by 11 frames. So I put the, the 17 with the 11. So now I have two 11 by 17 frames. So. Yeah, it was funny in a group I was in, somebody was saying about how many work in progress they have going. And I said, I always feel like the odd person out because I generally have, you know, one. Right now I've got three, you know, and uh, somebody said, well, and I, and I have this many knitting. And I said, oh, we're counting knitting projects too? Because yeah, if I have to count those as well, then I've got like four of them. And uh, some of them have been sitting on my needles for a very long time. I have this uh, lace circle uh, cardigan and um, I checked on Ravelry and uh, yeah, I cast that one on in 2014. So <laughs> it has been sitting for a long, long time. As usual, I got the interesting lace part knit and now it's just the plain sleeves that have been left forever. So I finally finished one. Uh, couple weeks ago while I was watching figure skating and then I plan to I've got the second one going so I'm going to do that when I watch uh, more figure skating this season I generally that's when I knit I don't knit very much anymore I'm cross stitching so I either either knit when I'm watching um figure skating because I don't have to look at it or when uh we travel because I find it's a bit more easily portable than a cross stitch. Especially since I usually leave my travel knitting for just the plain parts and not the patterned parts. And then, yeah, that makes it super easy to work on without having to uh, pay too much attention. Yeah, I have another sweater that I cast on forever ago. It's a pullover and it's got a cabled uh, yoke part on the top and then the bottom is all plain and it is the smallest gauge yarn I've ever knitted with. It's like sock yarn um, width so it's it's tiny it's like eight stitches per inch. Uh, so yeah I can't remember how many rows per inch but it's like eight stitches per inch so it is a lot of stitches for each round so yeah, that one has been, who knows, I might finish it in 10 years. <laughs> well, I started it when I was almost exclusively knitting, and then, yeah, I got into cross-stitch again. It all started because um, I wanted some kind of um, lighthouse pattern and or a picture, and I kind of thought, well, I've cross-stitched before I could make one, so I found it. It was by RDC, and... Um, yeah, that was it. That was how I fell down the uh, rabbit hole of uh, full coverage pieces. I was hooked by then. Yeah, because I had stitched before, but mostly kits and not full coverage. And then I kind of put that away for a while and I did knitting for like 10 years. And then, yeah, now I'm back to the... Uh, Cross stitch, so. So yeah, when I came back to it, that was when I discovered full coverage pieces. And the rest is history, as they say. Yeah, so we'd been asking our son for months if he could think of something he wanted for uh, Christmas. And he couldn't think of anything. And he said he'd be happy with just, you know, money to add to his own savings so he can buy his own. But we kind of wanted him to have something, you know, to open on Christmas Day. And uh, so my husband, um, he got a uh, Kirby game for the Switch. So because um, our son, when we got the... Um, the classic, the NES classic, which was the, oh, zoomed in there when I was trying to actually just move it. <laughs> anyway, um, he uh, 
he started playing the old Kirby game, the 2D original game, and he absolutely loved it. So yeah, now he gets a 3D Kirby game for the Switch, so. Oh, I saw a really cute one where somebody had done for Christmas. They had made a giant Kirby cutout and made it look like he was swallowing the uh, Christmas tree. So the Christmas tree was on its side getting sucked into Kirby's mouth. And, uh, and Kirby had a little Santa hat on. And uh, and the tree had a little Nintendo star topper. I thought that was really clever. I said, yeah, I could hear this picture. You know, the Kirby sucking sound <laughs> when he sucks things in. Mm. Yeah, we have the uh, Nintendo star tree topper. Actually, there's a picture on my Insta if anyone's curious. So yeah, I have column for, I think, let's see, like two more columns uh, for the uh, the pillar here, and then there'll be the very edge, which is a couple of couple of more columns of ten, and then it is done. Yeah, and I now have. I've been keeping count. I think I have thirty-seven out of uh, eighty-one colors completed. Let's see. No, thirty-eight now. I did another one yesterday, so. Yeah, we are almost halfway done with the colors. Yeah, I feel bad for anybody who's got to work outside today. That's miserable. As uh, the wind chill is pretty high today, and we've got the uh, winter warning on the uh, Weather Network app. Oh. So I got a snag in one of my nails here, so I'm just gonna trim it so I don't snag my thread or my cloth, because I've done that before and it's not fun. There we go. I had one time I was, uh, I was knitting and I wasn't at home and I, broke one of my nails and I didn't want to snag my yarn and so I ended up filing it down on my on my uh metal zipper <laughs> on my sweater it worked though so because yeah you really don't want to be snagging nice yarn and pulling it So windy out there, it's blowing the snow sideways. So yeah, that's not fun. Yeah, my husband's last job, he had a couple times he had to work in the ceiling of uh, one of the hockey arenas. And it's it's in a building, but it wasn't like climate controlled. So yeah, it was really, really cold. And uh, he had a coworker there who was from Nepal. So he was not used to cold weather at all. And uh, he kept dropping things because his hands weren't going numb. He was saying, you know, how do you stand it? But my husband's like, well, I'm used to it. <laughs> yeah, I think they were up there fixing some of the wiring on the lights, overhead lights or something before there was a hockey game. Yeah. Yeah, because we have a, a local amateur hockey team, so the minor leagues, so yeah. Oh, don't get stuck, dude. <laughs> yeah, good. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why some people prefer rear wheel drive because it seems to me it gets stuck more often. I insist on my, my four wheel drive. 
a lot of times I find it's not the stopping that is the difficult part. It's actually the starting when you're on ice and yeah, it likes to try and uh, slide all over the place once you hit the gas, even just lightly. So yeah, you have to be prepared for that. I think I'll be going, well, we'll see if I have to go back up to the top yet, or if I can continue on downwards. So you can see it kind of goes not in quite a straight line as I follow the colors. So it's, like I said, sort of a diagonal, but like a really, really steep one. <laughs> Less than a hundred stitches done yesterday, which is like the least amount I've done in quite a while. I usually get at least 200 on a slower day. But yeah, I just did not have much time to sit and stitch, so. And I'll have a little less time today as we, son and I have dentist appointments, so. That'll cut into my stitching time, but yeah, we will definitely be done before the end of the year, that's for sure. At the beginning of November, I wasn't sure, but uh, yeah. I think I have now about 2,500 stitches left, so that definitely won't take me a month. I think even on a slow month, I get 10 to 12,000 done. And on a good month, I get 15,000 or more. So yeah, 2,500 will take very little time. <laughs> Definitely won't take the whole month. See how long this one is. Not too long. And let's check this one. Yeah, neither of these are string long, but this one I think I'm not going to bother parking anywhere. Yeah. If I can get it threaded, that is. There we go. Yeah, there's enough for maybe one more stitch of this, so it's really not worth parking it since there isn't a lone stitch anywhere nearby, so I'll just tie this off. This is a pretty long one. Okay, so I'm going to park this one back 
up over to the right and carry on for another column of this thread or this color. Oops. There. Got a knot on the back. We do not want that. I pulled a little too hard. I thought the thread was longer <laughs> than it actually was, and I unthreaded it. Okay, this will be only enough for the three that I've highlighted. second I thought I marked that wrong but I didn't <laughs> Still within the inch. I carry about an inch max, so. Oh, 
felt like it was trying to knot up, but it wasn't, so. Try and catch that before you've stitched around it with other threads because I can tell you that definitely secures it. I had one I discovered afterwards was wrong and I tried to pull it back and it actually broke because it was so secured by the other threads stitched into it that yeah. Oh, that was definitely not fun to try and correct after that. I had to rip it back quite a bit till I could get it end long enough to secure and then start another thread to replace those stitches. So yeah, definitely. I always kind of feel along the back with my finger every few stitches just to make sure it's smooth and there's no knots because that way I can catch something easier if there is a problem. Oh, I think I may have parked something. Yeah, incorrectly. This is, yeah, this should have been parked up higher. I couldn't count. This one is the number four. Yeah, and I parked it. Oh, and I just parked the other one incorrectly. My gosh, I tell you. <laughs> Let's fix that, okay. One, two, three, yeah, those should be. Oh, come on. Should be four from that grid line. There we go. Okay. Yeah, we watched uh, We're the Millers last night. Man, that was painful. Funny, but painful, my goodness. Uh. Yeah, and then we watched, tried watching another movie that was listed as a comedy. And I tell you, I get really annoyed that, um, I mean, I guess it's not cable, our fiber optic service. It seems to label everything as comedy if there's like one joke in it. And uh, yeah, it wasn't. It was a... Uh, Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels, which was rated really highly, but we got bored. We watched about half an hour and gave up, and it was listed as a comedy, and it's like, yeah, there were a few moments that made you laugh, but it's not a comedy. It annoys me so much that they call things comedies when they aren't. There was another one that I recorded and we watched, and it was called uh, War Dogs, and it was about, you know, people smuggling weapons, and... Um, and uh, yeah, again, it was listed as a comedy. And I remember when I, I set it to record thinking, how could they make that a comedy? And it, it was not. You know, it had a couple of moments that made you laugh, but it was a drama and quite a dark one. Because I mean, you know, they're smuggling, you know, weapons to warlords. Like that's not lighthearted material. And uh, yeah, so it gets really irritating where I sit there, I'm in the mood for something funny, and it's not. Maybe it was a good movie, but that wasn't what I thought I was ordering, right? Ugh. <clears throat> yeah, and that movie was really highly rated, but I don't know, it wasn't to our taste. Plus, uh wasn't one you can really watch when you're too tired because um, their accents were very thick. And so I had to really concentrate to catch what they were saying. I had the same problem with, I tried to watch the uh, UK version of Law and & Order. And yeah, I had a hard time through the accents. They were uh, very strong. And at the time when I was watching it, I didn't have the ability to turn on captions. So... Yeah, I was really lost. <clears throat> yeah, I said, I don't have, I'm not hard of hearing, but I absolutely love captions because I have auditory processing disorder, which is really common with, a, uh, with ADHD. And I tell people, you know, you can hear the words, but they don't mean anything. I said, it's kind of like, you know, have you ever said a word way too many times 
in a row and it stops meaning anything. I said, it's like that, but with all the words at the same time, you know, you see the pe person's mouth moving, you can hear the sounds and you know that they are supposed to mean something, but your brain just doesn't hear anything. So yeah, <clears throat> I always watch with captions on. Of course, that's a whole other rant when they don't bother fixing their automatic captions. Some of the uh, guesses the computer makes are horrible. <laughs> oh, at least they fixed this year. Last year, when Law & Order was airing, they had it turned down too low that the computer couldn't catch the uh, what they were saying. And some of the captions were worse than having none at all. They were just gibberish. They would have half of one word and half of another word and the middle of another, the one, both words was missing. And yeah, like it became actually more distracting because I'm trying to figure out what they're saying and the captions are not helping. They're just confusing me even more. So, but uh, this season they seem to have fixed that. So I'm glad. <coughs> I guess I wasn't the only one who had an issue with it. Okay, so I'm just going to check the length. These are both pretty long. All right, no problem. Yeah, it depends how strong it is. I have, I've watched a few, <coughs> pardon me, Australian TV shows and I could understand them. And we just finished watching a New Zealand show um, called The Almighty Johnsons. And it was about a family of brothers who are actually Norse gods as well. It was quite funny. Yeah, we enjoyed it. It is definitely an 18 plus show. <coughs> I will say that. <coughs> Pardon me, so be prepared. It's on uh, Amazon Prime. But uh, it was it was quite funny. Yeah, it was three seasons. We quite enjoyed it. We just finished it last night. The ending wasn't quite what... Uh, I expected, but it was good. <clears throat> and it wasn't disappointing, so. Because, yeah, that's the worst, right? Oh, look at that. Oh, I grabbed this thread by accident. Yep. Okay, that's why I suddenly realized I was too close to my, uh, my bottom grid line here. I realized that couldn't be right. Yeah, there's only one stitch here of this color, not two. I wonder if any of you noticed. <laughs> That's okay, I caught myself. So, oh, no, I need to undo one more. Yeah. There we go. did that one park it there now I want to pick up this one yeah similar gray here close to each other got to be careful not to mix them up like I just did
Goodness. How did that happen? Wanting to cooperate. There's a little bit of a knot in here. So. Oh. Oh, I got it. Okay, so I'm gonna yeah, cut that out. Sometimes the way the needle goes back in on itself, it can tie a little bit of a knot. It's one drawback to this. Oh my gosh, come on. Cooperate with me. There we go. Yeah, so sometimes that can happen. I'm just gonna draw this along the back. It's a bit of a carry here. And all the stitches between them are done, so. I like to keep things tacked down and secure on the back, so. Well, instead of tying off, actually, I think I'll just carry it right here. Yeah, that's sort of where the thread came out after I drew it along the back to end it off. So I'll just do that. Then I don't have to attach another one. Okay, we'll get to finish off a binge, bunch of threads here before we head back up. <clears throat> I 
just pierce that to thread instead of going through the loop. I've done that before. It does not pull through smoothly if you do that. <laughs> okay. There we go. And uh, as always, I'm making sure I'm tucking all my ends in towards the, uh, the center of the design so that they don't potentially show through on the front. <clears throat> Okay, so I end up ending these both off, yeah. That's no problem. <clears throat> a bit. Sometimes when there's quite a few threads crossing each other, it can feel a little bit thicker on the back. So I just wanted to make sure there wasn't a knot back there, but thankfully there wasn't. Okay, so this one is enough, I think, yeah, to do those. So this one.
So sometimes when I'm doing this column style stitching, I'm gonna just sort of cut it off there artificially so that I can sort of keep stitching around it without closing stuff in. So. so sort of, I could carry over here, but then that would mean I'd have to go and fill in all this stuff at the top before I could carry on downwards. So sometimes I will just sort of make it artificial break so that I can carry on stitching all the way to the bottom. So I'm going to park it there. And trying to come up on the other side. Split the fabric there. Didn't come up in quite the right spot. probably hear my vent cover flapping around because of the wind out there. I was saying that we got our guinea pig a little Santa outfit. There's a picture of her wearing that on my Insta as well. <laughs> it was funny too because I tried to put it with the caption Santa Piggy and uh, it wouldn't let me. Well, it kept warning me that it could get potentially flagged. And I'm going, really? So I, I said Santa Piggy, hurry down the chimney tonight and it didn't want me to. I tried cutting it down to just Santa Piggy. I guess, I don't know, the word Piggy it was maybe objecting to. But it let me put it on Facebook with that caption, so I don't know. Oh, weird. I could have appealed it, but uh, I decided not to fight it. So I just said, "Here's Miss Buster in her uh, in her Santa outfit," because <laughs> she's so cute. I had to show it off. The year my son was a crawling baby, we had a little Santa outfit for him too, and it barely fit, uh, but I put it on him anyway. <laughs> I said I had to get a picture of it, him in that suit, so 
yeah. His, his little face was stained orange because he'd eaten, he'd eaten uh, carrots, pureed carrots that day. So yeah, <laughs> his cheeks were all orange, but yeah, he's so cute. Yeah, it was funny. That first year we had the uh, tree, he wasn't really that interested in it. Um... He mostly was interested in the tree skirt. He kept peeking underneath it to see if there was anything under there. <laughs> uh, but the actual tree itself, yeah, he wasn't that interested in it. The next year, though, he was, that was the last, he was taking naps. And I remember I, I put him for a nap and he didn't want to sleep. So finally, after an hour, I gave up and I brought him out. And he comes into the living room and he, he climbs up on the love seat with his blanket and he tucks himself all in and he's lying there looking at the tree. And like two minutes later, I look over and he's asleep. So <laughs> that was all he wanted was to see the tree. Because <laughs> oh. from his bedroom, he couldn't, from his crib, he couldn't see it. So yeah. Once he saw the tree, then he was content and went to sleep. It was funny. He didn't talk yet or I guess he could have told me. But yeah, it's pretty cute. And then, yeah, he, uh, the year he was two and a half for Christmas, he, um, he started decide he started storing his stuffed animals in the, uh, in the Christmas tree and his blanket. And it was funny because he stuck it in there and then he couldn't find it. So he's bugging me to help him find it. And I looked all over the place and I couldn't find it anywhere. Sat down thinking, okay, where else can I look? And then all of a sudden I see him and he's pulling his blanket out of the tree. He suddenly remembered it was there. And of course, because it was like at waist height for him, it was right at the bottom. So I didn't see it, especially the way he'd stuffed it into the tree. So yeah, it was quite funny. <sighs> but then I knew after that, if he was missing a stuffed animal or a blanket to, uh, to take a look inside the tree and see if it was there. <laughs> I have some pictures of his, uh, his stuffed animals in the tree. So yeah, it's pretty cute. I don't think I did that when I was a kid. We just like to pull the tinsel off. Okay, so that's nice. Got a whole bunch of threads ended off. And we've reached the bottom of the design. Okay, so let's head back up a bit. I think that one can stay out of the way. We won't be touching that one for quite a while. Oh, I did that one. I just didn't color it in. Okay. Yeah. One more pin stitch of this. Oh, grabbed both threads together there. That won't work.
probably hear that wind is picking up out there. Okay, so again, I think I'm going to head right back up to the top now. There's so much purple here. When I was first working the first column, I was kind of nervous. But uh, yeah, when you back up, it looks right. So. <laughs> yeah, so well, I've worked on patterns by this, this designer before and they've always worked out. So I'm gonna trust the pattern and yeah, I'm glad I did. <laughs> yeah, especially at the tops of the pillars where the arches are so much purple. I just thought, wow, this, this looks strange, but yeah, it did work out. There was one I saw somebody was stitching and the lady's leg under the table, it looked almost like it had burgundy and stuff on it. And it was like, geez, that looked wrong. But then once you finished it and had all the other colors around it, the shading was perfect.
It's also one, it's nice if someone else has stitched that pattern before you and they have a picture in the gallery, you can look and see how it looks on their piece stitched up. Yeah, I had on my blue dragon, there's a big patch of purple right near his, his mouth that I thought just looked really weird. But then several other people had stitched to that pattern. So I looked and yeah, it blended in well once it was all done. So, okay. So from looking at this color, it's going to be a column going about that wide for a bit before I come back up to the top again, carry on downwards. second I thought maybe I split the fabric but I didn't it just looked kind of funny but it was correct goodness. <laughs> Having a hard time pulling up one needle there. And so yes, some have asked, I do plan to 
do the finishing stitches on camera. I wouldn't want you all to miss out. You will see the completion of this project. Seems only fair if you've been, <laughs> if you stuck with me for uh, all these months or even more than a year watching me stitch this. Yeah. You should get to see, get to see the ending. Okay, I'll do these two. And that will bring me up to a nice round number of 160. So I think we will take a break there. Just make sure I park this and mark this. There we go, 160, 98.87%. We're getting close. So um, as usual, uh, thank you for joining me today and I hope to see you here another time. All right, thanks everyone, bye.